Happy Wednesday. I'm Jen Lorman, exercise physiologist, mom of three, and co-creator of Tighten Your Tinkler. I'm Christina Walsh, physical therapist, mom of two, and co-creator of Tighten Your Tinkler. We have a really important topic to bring to you today, um, poop problems. These are some of the most mortifying of all the issues that we help women work with and get past. We've currently been doing our private assessments for our newest group of ladies who joined during our anniversary sale. And what we keep hearing from them is, we bring up the stuff why? and they say, why is nobody talking about this? Why has no one told me about this? Why has no one explained it to me before? Not all of them have these issues, but many of them have some amount of these issues as part of what we're addressing. So listen in. <laughs> listen in and know that sometimes these particular issues are accompanied by other digestive issues. So we're not, minimizing those particular issues like IBS, Crohn's, diverticulitis, any other GI issues that you may be dealing with. Know that sometimes you have both of these things, but particularly if you had some of these symptoms and you've already gone and seen a gastroenterologist and they've told you they can't find anything wrong, yet you still continue to have these issues. Problems. Yeah. We're talking to you today. Is this for you? We may have your answer right here. So speaking of those interviews, we asked the women that come through the program to take our core connection quiz, which you guys could do today. Um, if you go over to our website, it's on the homepage of our website, or our link is in our bio on Instagram. And Christine is going to read through some of the questions that pertain specifically to poop issues. And these are ways that you'll know if you, if you have to raise your hand and go, oh my gosh, that's me, then this is you. Uh, the first one is, do you feel you need to strain too hard to have a bowel movement? I don't know. What's too hard? Well, if you're pushing and pushing and pushing and it's like you're trying to give birth and you're red in the face and you're straining and straining, that's too hard. It should not Way be hard. that hard. Way too hard. <laughs> Way too hard. <laughs> but if you're really, if you feel like you need to exert a lot of energy and effort to empty your bowels to poop, there's, there's something wrong there. Sometimes it's due to constipation, and sometimes it has to do with another issue. So the next one is, do you feel you have not completely emptied your bowels at the end of a bowel movement? This is way more common than you think. If you're going, holy moly, I never thought about it that way, but that's totally me. You're not alone. This is, a, again, way more common than you might think. What We're going to explain a little bit more about the why behind this and then what some things you can do about it, but it's because sometimes the poop the poop kind of gets pockets. stuck in little pockets. We're gonna explain again a little bit more about that in a moment, the whys and the what's really going on and the how does it feels. Yeah. <laughs> but the next one is, do you usually lose stool beyond your control if it's well formed? So you didn't mean to have poop come out, but it did. It And this often, for some women we've worked with, what this actually is, is you bend over to pick something up and exert yourself. And there's little, you know, little right. rabbit rabbit poops that sneak out into your underpants. That's often what this, in real life, what that looks like. Do you usually lose stool beyond your control if it's loose or liquid? This is more common. Yeah, everybody gets diarrhea sometimes, unfortunately, but if you can't control when it comes out, that's not normal. Uh, and that's what this is about. And understandably, that's gonna be the one you're more likely to lose control over because it's easier to slip out if you don't have tone in the muscle there. And that sphincter muscle, which we're gonna explain a little bit more with the image. I think there was one more, two more actually. Do you yeah. usually lose gas beyond your control? So, I mean, how mortifying, right? If anybody's dealing with that, you're surely looking for a solution. That's in yoga class, in the business meeting, mm -hmm. Sometimes just changing position or getting up off the floor. If you're in your yoga or Pilates class, you're doing one of those ab roll-ups and you pass gas unexpectedly, that's due to that change in intra-abdominal pressure. And again, it goes back to that muscle tone. Right. The last one, do you usually have pain when you pass your soul? If it hurts to poop, we need to work on the, the kind of composition of the poop, which we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But there's also some, there's pressure balance issues. There's support, internal support that's probably missing and causing awkward pressure where it doesn't belong. 
in that process. So we're gonna use our favorite teaching image, <laughs> which is my prolapse picture. <laughs> but um, do you wanna point? Yeah, so the two kind of diagnostic terms that can explain the whys behind a lot of these symptoms, one would be rectocele. And that's what this is actually a picture of. So this, the green area is the rectum. So this is bladder here and you can see falling. This is uterus falling down into the vagina. But what we're really talking about today is the rectal issues. So this is the rectum and we should not have this little whoop, this little right here. Yeah, here's normal up here. There we go. So there's this, the, um, the green, up, there, the green yeah. up here is normal. So you can see there's not that little bulge. And the bulge is the rectocele. It's basically the rectum kind of falling forward into the space that should just be the vaginal canal. And this is where that, if you feel like you haven't been able to get it all out, incomplete emptying of the bowel or a lot of straining, it's often because the poop is actually getting stuck right here. That's the pocketing, the pouching. This can also be the cause of the bend over and the little rabbit yeah. poop slipped into your underpants the poop gets kind of stuck right here. And this is, and if you're having any of that, it's much worse if the consistency of the stool is not optimal. So the other thing, about, yeah, rectal prolapse. yes, so rectal prolapse is another issue that can happen here. And this is not really pictured in the image, but rectal prolapse is more just the whole rectum, almost basically turning itself inside out, so right through, through that opening. the opening, yeah. through the hole, exactly. And, and, and that's so understandable when you say it that way, how it can have to do with childbirth. There we go. <laughs> the last one we're gonna talk about is an interoceal. That is, there's an arrow there. There's an arrow here. So above all of these organs is your small intestines. They take up a whole bunch of space in your abdomen. And that arrow is where the pressure from the interoceal, which is a falling of the small intestines, again, all just fancy words for yeah, pocketing and falling down of things that shouldn't be falling down. The interoceal is up falling down of the small intestines and the symptoms for that can feel very digestive yeah. because your small intestine isn't able to function right if it's kind of kinked or stuck or lodged where you feel like you have in that digestive process, like you, that incomplete emptying feeling could very well be from that pocketing of the poop in the actual intestines themselves. And the enteroseal, just like any prolapse condition looks different for each person. It's again, the weakening of the connective tissue that the organ is encased in. So that could be a weakness, that could be a hole, but it's again, that change of the support system of those organs, which obviously, obviously has a huge impact on intra-abdominal pressure balance and then causes all the symptoms yeah. that we just, the issues that we just talked about reading through that list, the quiz. I did want to mention a symptom that is a symptom of prolapse in general, one that we haven't talked about previously. Um, some women report feeling like they have a tampon that's stuck up in there. And as you can see with the vaginal canal, this is where you would insert a tampon. So whether you have a rectocele or you have some bladder prolapse, something that is blocking that space, it can certainly feel that way. So maybe um, downward pressure and the other things that we've talked about previously maybe haven't resonated with you, but if you've questioned, wait a minute, do I have a tampon in? It feels like I have a tampon in. And you may have that and you may not. That's the tricky part about all this. Yeah. You get, the presentation and the, how does it feel is a little bit different for each body in each body yeah and, and what's falling into what or pressing on what but all of these things are part of that picture and you can have any subset of the issues that we've talked about and this is this is we're still talking to you and we're still going to give you some solutions next and we have some great news because these are solutions that you can actually start doing today which is what we love to bring on the sunshine and the rainbows with this stuff because god knows we need some so we're going to give you four solutions that you can start implementing today. One, you've heard us talk about multiple times, the wonderful tool called the Squatty Potty, because the position that you poop in really matters. Yeah, and Christina's going to explain the actual biomechanics of why the it matters. The position to poop in actually resembles more of a deep squat because it takes uh, the ligament that's kind of 
around the rectum and it puts it in a relaxed position to have your knees above your hip height. So the squatty potty is just this little stool and you pull it a little bit out from around the bowl of your potty and you have to make sure that you have the right height because again, it's about knees higher than hips. So if you have a comfort height toilet, you need the, the squatty potty version that has this extra bit, the 2.0 they call it. Your feet are gonna be here and it's important that they're spread apart from each other. So you can't just use your kid's yeah. bathroom stool because it's this narrow. This is not the same and it's not gonna work the same way. You need to have your feet spread and you need to have your knees higher than your hips. You're gonna be leaning forward, but not bending forward, not slumping forward. And this is going to relieve the pressure of the ligament that kind of ropes around that rectum. And it's gonna allow a much smoother and easier passage of that poop outside your body with less straining and less of that pocketing going on. So it's a big, big deal. Do you wanna to stay, stay there? To a squatty potty. Do you wanna stay there and talk about oh, sure. the other positioning techniques that have worked some for us? So both Christina and myself deal with rectus seals. Obviously you just saw the picture of mine. <laughs> and um, we've both found some different ways to be able to evacuate our bowels a little bit easier. Um, you find the breath. I find the breath for sure, exhaling and leaning forward. And then for myself, sometimes I will rock side to side, forward and back as I breathe to kind of help get things going. Exhaling. Yeah. And again, you can imagine, think back to that picture of the way there's pocketing and pressure situations happening that's stopping things from smooth passage. So you can imagine that kind of almost like a little massage or relocating yeah. to give a little it bit of rocking. It is kind of like a little mini pressure rebalancing of sorts. And I find that when I do that, it just makes things a whole lot easier in terms of being able to completely empty. You added a nice exhale as you're giving that downward <laughs> pressure to have that bowel movement. So all these things make a big, big difference in getting you more smooth yes. passage. The other things that we're gonna talk about have to do with the consistency and the formation of your poop and why that's such a big deal. Yep, I, I actually had a conversation recently with a friend who's a urologist who said, I was saying, you know, it's funny that women don't identify constipation the same way that we do. Yeah. You know, we'll ask if you're constipated and say, oh no, I don't have any problem with that. And then we, if we really get into it, start talking about poop consistency. And that's why my urologist friend said, oh, I don't even ask that anymore. I just say, let's talk about the consistency. You got to cut yeah. straight to the chase because if you're pooping little pellets or the poop is clumped, clumped or cracked or dried or really lumpy, like hard lumps, that is on the range of constipation that yeah. is not ideal and it's going to only increase a lot of those things all those issues yeah all the quest the quiz questions are going to be worse if you can't get the poop consistency right and it doesn't even have to be that hard we're talking it's it's simple but it ha you have to do it for it to work and you have to do it consistently i mean christina and i incorporate these things into our daily yep and One, i and i yeah. noticed when i do if i fall off the wagon over the weekend you're ready to get back on with its hydration and fiber. Big difference makers. Yeah. So for the hydration piece, we recognize right now and particularly, many of you guys are wearing masks throughout the day and you're not drinking as much. And <clears throat> there is something called high lights electrolytes. We've talked about it previously. We'll be dropping some links below the video, but it's a game changer. You put eight drops in your bottle of water and it is gonna help you stay hydrated. So it's an easy, easy thing for you to do. And that keeps things well formed and softer for easy passage of poop and then fiber yeah. is- Yeah, and not to mention your tissues. Yes. I mean, it's, it's much better for your tissues to be hydrated. And, 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 and it's gonna decrease that bloated feeling. It's just way more pleasant when you get the hydration and fiber right in a lot of ways. And the fiber is another piece. Jen has actually taught me about the ground chia seeds. Yeah, this is fantastic. We mix it in with our oatmeal, our magic morning oatmeal. Our magic morning oatmeal. <laughs> we add some cinnamon and it tastes delicious. And you're getting that extra bit of fiber that helps things stay consistently a better consistency. So I do want to put a caveat there that obviously if you're dealing with things like 
Crohn's disease, IBS, diverticulitis, and you know seeds are a big no-no for you, obviously you'd want to get that approved by your physician. But the magic with the milled chia seeds is really the combination of the soluble and insoluble fiber. Because not only does it help get things moving, it, it forms the stool, but then it also softens the stool because there's omegas in that seed. So it's like a natural stool softener as well as forming it really well. So that when you poop, the ideal poop is that it's one long, big, smooth piece of poop. Yep, in case you were wondering. <laughs> <laughs> These things are worth attending to though. They are. And last but not least, if you really want to next level your results and get past the stuff in a whole new way, jump into our signature program that we offer additional toileting techniques and, and posturing that makes even a, a further difference in there in going into more detail. And the exercise series that takes 10 minutes activates all the support muscles yeah. in the way that you need to give that up and in integrity and support back to that tissue. So you stop having as much of the pocketing and the straining and the pressure and the pain. So yeah. that's always Teaching available. Proper breath work as well. And just having access to that private Facebook group where you can ask questions, get quick solutions. We're the only ones that are moderating that group. So we really do feel a strong connection to the women that are in there. And we don't want you to be dealing with these issues. You don't have to be dealing with these issues. There are, start implementing some of these simple solutions, but there are ways that you can really improve your quality of life. And you'll be really pleased because while you're getting all this stuff feeling better, you'll also be noticing your booty looking more perky again. And your belly looking flatter. And bonus so you can address all of it at once anytime at tigertinkler.com where you can also find that core connection quiz to figure out i don't know is this me i never thought about any of that stuff that way all right guys see you next time <laughs>